Hi guys, my name is Boy T and you're watching Joe Burke Today. Robert, welcome to the show to talk to us about all things insurance related. Thank you, Leroy, for the invitation. It's my great pleasure to talk about insurance. Now, the most recent thing that's been happening in the media has been the uh, Momentum Saga. Uh, they finally agreed to actually make payment uh, despite a closure uh, being put in place. Was that the right move? Um, I think, first of all, it's very important to realize that they decided to make a payment out of uh, shareholders' funds, not out of insurance funds. So they've taken it the dispute out of the insurance terrain into somewhere else. So they've left the insurance law, I think, intact. So the question is, were they correct in, in terms of insurance law to pay out? The answer is categorically no. They should not have made that payment. Were they right to do what they've done? I think that only time will tell. And it's interesting to see how that development continues as we go forward. So why not stick to their guns? Um, I think public opinion, and I think that's a big problem because what we should really function is according to rule of law, and what we should do is resolve all disputes in terms of existing institutions. What we've done is bypassed all the institutions and the law and the rule of law and made a, a decision which I think Momentum thinks is politically or, or correct as far as public opinion is concerned. And I think it's not the right way to work, and unfortunately I think it's becoming quite an international development is to try and placate public opinion, which means that we're really substituting the rule of law for mob rule, and, and that's never going to work. So I think we need to get back to rule of law and using the institutions to resolve those issues. Now let's talk about life insurance policy linguistics, the language behind contractual yeah. agreements. Is it that difficult for people to actually understand? It probably is, but in this case it is not a problem, it's not an issue of a term in a policy. It's not an issue of something which is unclear. It's really a common law requirement which is about 300 years old, introduced 300 years ago by Lord Mansfield. And the logic behind that is an insurance company has to assess the risk. That is, it has to decide whether it wants to accept the risk and if it's going to accept the risk, what premium to charge. In order to do that, it needs to get information and the only person who has that information is the insured. And so the Common law was developed 300 years ago that the insured will disclose all material facts to the insurer so that the insurer can make the decision. So the real question which we have to ask ourselves in this case is did the insured disclose all the material facts? So, and, and therefore it's not a, a question that the policy wording is too difficult to understand and he was misled uh, or not. Now, the fact that Momentum had, had said was not disclosed was that he had elevated uh, blood sugar levels. Now, elevated blood sugar levels indicates that he would be, you know, be run the risk of becoming a diabetic, and with that comes a whole lot of, of, of other health issues. And that, of course, affects the decision to take the policy on or not. Now, I, I mean, I must just put a little bit of a caveat. The only facts I know from is what's been in the newspaper, and I have to try and remember those facts now, so if I make a few mistakes, it's, uh, it's, it's really what I want. So the que question which we really have to ask is, is the information which he did not disclose is it a material fact or not? Now, what is the information? As I said, it is that his uh, uh, sugar blood levels too high. Now, did he know about this? The evidence has indicated that over a three year period, he went five times to the doctor, and five times they measured the blood sugar level, and five times it was elevated, and the last time was uh, uh, two weeks before he entered into the policy. So. There's no question that he, he was, was aware of it, or at least the, the inference can clearly be drawn that he was aware of it. Now this, this doctrine which we're looking at of disclosure is known as the, the, the doctrine of disclosure. You have to disclose all material facts to, to, to the insurer. There have been problems over the years, over the 300 years. And one of the two of the problems which arise is uh, uh, did the insured actually know about the fact and did he know that it is a material fact which he has to disclose? I think the fact has been to the doctor and the doctor told him uh, that he's got blood sugar levels. And as I understand comments made afterwards that shortly thereafter, he became, went on to chronic medicine as diagnosed as diabetic. So the, the warning signs with the blood sugar level turned out to be true. So I think we can accept the evidence indicates that he was fully uh, aware of it. Now did he know that this was a material fact he needs to disclose, which one can argue is a technical thing and maybe the public don't understand uh, all of it. And that's why in 2015 the English changed their law and, and the English said the common law requirement may be a bit confusing to the public. 
So we will resolve that issue by saying, if an insurance company wants to know, what he has to do is to put a very simple question in the proposal form, which you must answer. And, and that, that question must be so simple, it can lead to no doubt at all. So in this case, the system was very simple. Do you have abnormal blood sugar level, yes or no? And he said no. So you, you can't even say he didn't know. You know. So under these circumstances, I think any insurance company with those facts will say this is a material non-disclosure, and therefore there's a problem. Now, what is the problem? Problem is a problem in law, problem of contracts. You and I enter into a contract. If I have to enter in a contract, then there's going to be consensus between us at, in, in our mind. Now, I will enter into an insurance contract as an insurer on the facts which have been disclosed to me. If those facts are wrong, then there is no contract. So if you make a material non-disclosure, then there is no contract ab initio, right from day one. There never was a contract under those circumstances. So under these circumstances, then, Momentum had no contractual and has no contractual obligation to pay the sum of money out. So I think its original decision was correct. But having said that, are we likely to see any changes in terms of uh, regulations from insurance companies to avoid such another uh, incident? I don't know what changes you can make on a regulative basis for this. Uh, because what, the only situation you can say is let's abolish the doctrine of disclosure completely. Yeah. Okay, then, then take the following example, uh, which is you know, not unknown. I can give you some cases to show you how this, this ha happens in practice. I go to the doctor and the doctor says, I've got bad news for you, you've got cancer. And uh, there's nothing you can do, it's inoperable and you don't really have much long life to live much longer to live. So I go home, so I can't leave my wife, you know, penniless. So I go to the insurance company and I say to the insurance company, can you give me 10 million life, life cover? They give me a form, do you have any medical thing? And say, well, I answer no, no. But in the new model which you have now just suggested, let's do away with disclosure, there'd be no questions to ask. So the fact that I've got cancer is now can't be asked and will not be answered, it becomes irrelevant. I go home, commit suicide, my wife gets paid out. Now, what would normally happen in an insurance company will say, we're not going to pay out some material non-disclosure. But in your model, there is no material non-disclosure. So what would then happen is the moral hazard becomes so great that the insurance market cannot survive. One of the reasons, one of the, when we had great economic research done by the Nobel uh, uh, laureate, uh, uh, Kenneth Arrow, he wanted to know why is insurance so limited? And he came to the conclusion, insurance can only operate under those circumstances where the moral hazard can be managed. So if I can go commit suicide, my wife gets 10 million rand, under those circumstances, the moral hazard becomes so great, it becomes unmanageable and there will be no insurance market. So the doctrine of disclosure is to deal with a moral hazard sort of problem. So I, I can't see that there can be any uh, uh, changes as far as this case is concerned. There are other cases I can tell you where I think we can improve on the doctrine of disclosure, but not this case. I mean, in this case, it's clear that the fact which was not disclosed is material. It's also clear that he did not disclose it despite it was clearly asked in a proposal form to do so. But there are other cases which I can give you where we can say, let's relook at this doctrine of disclosure to see if we can improve on it.